Okay, so let's talk about JavaScript. Um, there is a lot that we could teach about JavaScript. It is its own coding language. Um, <clears throat> for right now, though, for what you guys are using it for, um, you're using JavaScript pretty much as a way to get a handle on the different parts of your um, your code. So having something you could you could build buttons and you can have it have functionality like turning on and off different types of animations basically switching between different anim animations um, and there's a whole lot of documentation in there about what we can do. What we're mainly focusing on though is really how I can talk to that's not what I wanted to hit. How I can talk to my individual document pieces um, and uh, how I can get them to do the things that I want. So basically what we're going to end up doing is we're going to, we can either modify our HTML, um, the either adding additional children, like additional paragraph items if they clicked on something that they were interested on. We could have more text, we can unhide things, but we can use it most of the time for CSS stuff. Um, so there are a lot of examples. Um, if you went to functions though and you kind of looked at it, um, really all a function is is it's a block of code designed to do a particular task. Okay, and if we look at this, it always starts with uh, the word function. You give some name to it and then you are passing in some type of parameter um, or some requirements. So this requires two things. They should be numbers because it's going to multiply them together and return it back to whoever called it. Okay, um, so we could use that to our advantage in code because we could go and find what we're looking for in our code. Okay. Now, what ends up happening, and if I open up Dreamweaver, um, we have, it's called a DOM. Um, I think it stands for Dynamic Object Management. What is it? Document Object Model. Okay. But basically what it is, is if we're looking at it, is what we've been talking about is that the HTML has children, the head and the body, the body has children, a header, the header has a, a child, the H1, the header, the nav, the section, the section, and the footer are all um, siblings of each other. They're at the same level, and they are children of the body. Okay, so if we use that to our advantage, we can point to the specific um, selectors that we're trying to talk to and then we can change their designs. So if we're looking at my website, like what would I want to do that for? Well, some of you guys have been asking about, well, how can I increase some functionality? Well, let's say this text. If I locate where that is, I can that, have, yeah. that is, I could have some uh, JavaScript code that basically when I'm hovering my mouse over and try to read it, I just increase the uh, the font size. Yeah. And then when I mouse off of it, it goes back to normal. Okay, just to help improve readability and help them be able to focus on what they're looking at. I could do that for multiple elements. So there are a couple of different ways to do it. And the code that I currently have, I have a picture um, actually two pictures and um, I used a snippet and we could do it with a lot less code. Um, basically we could have it where it's mousing on, it changes to a different image, I mouse off, it changes back. Okay, um, and in my code it's using these four JavaScript, let me go to the code, these four JavaScript functions, okay? JavaScript, I mean, it's it's pretty much everywhere. I could go to, you know, insert and look for different things. 
Um, in this case, this was a rollover image. So then when I did that, it generated the functions for me on what it would do for restoring the image, preloading the images, finding those images, and swapping the images. That's all it does. And so that div class, um, when I do on mouse out, it calls that function the multimedia swap image restore, which is calling this code. When I do my on mouse over, so I'm going on it, it's switching the images from this image to this image. When, um, and then the other ones are kind of getting called in between. Um, so the preload images, that's happening automatically. And then this find object, that one's getting called when you're trying to do your switches and stuff right here on load that's where it's getting called it's loading that other image and what's the other one find object let's just see if we can find it find obj there it is so it's getting called right here on the swap image it's calling this function to run and swap, swap the image okay so it sounds a lot more difficult than what it really is um, so just to kind of show what I was talking about there are a number of um, different JavaScript ways that you can see like here we can look at instead of having it actually on our document itself we could have it stored off of our HTML page that we could use it on all of our HTML pages and have it customized. So we could create, like what I was saying, the focus where we have it increase in size, um, where that would work for anything that we want to apply it to. <clears throat> and there's a couple different ways that we can write them. If we were looking at the scripts and we were just doing it on that page, we always have to have just like when we were doing the styles in the body or in the head, uh, we will put our JavaScript code in between these script tags. Okay, you have to have a opening and closing tag. And then document is the web page itself. And most of the time you are going to be using this, get element by ID. And then you're actually pulling that ID out. We can do different things. If we're trying to actually change the uh, text of it, uh, we would use um, dot uh, inner HTML and then we can reassign. But for the most part, you're using dot style and then you can hit all of the CSS and make changes to things. So if I was going into a page or coming out of a page, I can make some changes. So this dot style, then I can actually hit what I'm trying to do and then I can make a change to it. Okay. So here we can see that hello world, that's the original. That's what it is right here. It's, it has this ID. Um, and then the second one is hello world. And I have no styles applied to it except for this script. This script is going and looking and finding on the DOM any of the elements that have the ID P2. Okay. And then it's applying the blue uh, font family Arial. It's doing some larger font size. Okay. And so then we end up getting this look. Okay. Now I could change this. I could change where I want this one to stay. But now I want it to apply P1 and run this again. And now it's applying blue but I still have the original font uh, and the original size to this hello world um, because that's the ID that it's tagging to. And then my P2 is changing to Arial and has a larger font size. Okay. So we could use it like this. The problem is, is what if I wanted to change everything on one page or multiple pages uh, I can only attach to the IDs that are inside that web page, and this script will only apply to those elements. 
Okay, so we can go and look at something where we are using functions. So this function, uh, all it does is where my x and y coordinates are, it's giving me the x and y, it's printing it there. What I could do with JavaScript is I could hold that information, those x and y coordinates, and say I was doing some type of specific animation, or I wanted to know where the user had their mouse at any given point, and I wanted to deal with it in a special way. Um, I could use the x and y coordinates and hold on to those. Okay. But what this also points to is that we can have certain things. My mouse over event is being applied to this paragraph, but I am changing the information in another paragraph. So using the ID demo, uh, I don't have any text in there, but my function for when I mouse over uh, the first paragraph that says click this paragraph, uh, I can have it um, to call this function right here and pass in this event that happened. This function that's defined inside the script is going through my web page looking for the ID demo, which is down here, and it's changing the inner HTML to this X giving me that screen X and that screen Y. Okay, that's all this does. So calling a function kind of helps clean it up. It doesn't look as bad as when I'm looking at it like this, but I could technically have this applied right inside the paragraph. It would look a lot uglier and it would be harder to manage. Okay, now I went through just to kind of show what I was talking about and had created a function now this one is still within the script but we're going to move it off where i have two functions that i call focus on and focus off and i am calling these functions i'm using the word this all this means is that whatever called it that's the id that i want to pass so even if i didn't identify an id whatever is calling it is what is going to be using that function okay so it says mouse over text but i have it based off of two events on mouse over and on mouse out so when i'm have my mouse on top of it then i'm calling this function focus on and i'm passing in that i'm calling this this is this becomes my id when i'm doing on mouse out then i'm calling this function focus off so what it does is when I hover over, I'm on mouse over for my event, I am increasing the font size of that element, okay, called by the ID. I'm changing the style, the font size, to 10 vertical width. When I go off, it shrinks back down to 5 vertical width. Okay, so I could change my styles based off of that um, and add a little bit more functionality. So this type of code, this is something that we could try to apply to our web page to try to increase the look. But there are a lot of different ways that we can do it. If we implemented a button, um, so here I have a paragraph tag, and I didn't write this one, but the event is on click and it's calling the my move okay function which is this so that's why it's inside the script tags so what that is doing is that it's pulling uh, a bunch of different pieces of information um, it's pulling right here it's pulling this animate id and it's assigning it to a variable and it's changing its position uh, inside of that container. So if I was clicking on it, we get to see what it looks like. See how it moves? Okay, that's by doing a little bit more um, JavaScript uh, code and your functionality for your stuff. It kind of depends on what you need it to do. For JavaScript, or for CSS, we can do a lot of this stuff with our animate, but if the animate um, is not doing exactly what you want it to do, you could 
be using JavaScript and create some functions to do more um, with different type of code, okay? So, the main thing that we need to focus on is that we're using the DOM to talk to the certain things uh, in our page, okay? So we could type document, I get element by ID and then pass in the ID and change stuff, okay? Um, the events, let me go to the events. The events is something where I can have things happen um, based off of what I'm doing on my screens, okay? Your JavaScript allows your website to be more interactive. So if they're submitting a form, you're loading a page, they're getting ready to close a page, any of that stuff I can attach. So the if you go to the W3Schools and you click JavaScript, you can scroll all the way down to DOM and look at events. It will talk about the different types. You can see examples of what they are doing on this, mouse over and mouse out. This is what I'm talking about. This is the one that I actually opened up and then started modifying to get it to do what I wanted it to do, okay? And you could just really kind of look at that to what you want to design. So this was my, the on mouse example. So I want to actually though create a separate JavaScript document. So if you're looking at uh, HTML scripts, as long as I have that script tag, I can change where my JavaScript is instead of having it on that HTML page. So let's start first with that. Let's go to JavaScript. And here I have my JavaScript. You can type, you can put type. Um, it's not really needed so much anymore because HTML5 um, JavaScript is the default. So the first thing that I would need to do is I need to add the source. And then I need to give the file name. Well, I don't have a file name for it yet. So let's go ahead and open up one. I want to do JavaScript right here, okay, and I have my JavaScript document, okay? Now, if you are going to do something complex, uh, you're going to want to start using comments. This is a single line comment. This would be an example of a multi-line comment. This is a multi-line comment. I have to start it with a slash and the asterisk, and I have to end it with a asterisk and a slash, okay? That would be a multi-line comment. This is a single line comment, okay? This is a single, line comment. Now why would I say this? If you are trying to actually do stuff in your code using JavaScript, you are going to want to comment things out if it's not working exactly how you want um, so that you can customize it to a point um, and test and debug. So let's go ahead and save this. I want to make sure that I'm saving it in this folder. I'm going to call it uh, Let's just call it JavaScript, JavaScript code. Nora, Nora, now I know. Make sure I'm in my site route. I save it. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to Make sure that I have it in my files menu. I should be able to see that JavaScript. I do right there. So that's what I actually want to put in here. I want to type it Java. Why is that? There we go. Okay. Make sure spelling is important. JavaScript code.js. Put that inside quotes. Okay. So now I have that, this, all of this, these functions, 
can get moved. I don't need them here anymore. I can move them to my JavaScript code and just start pasting them in. So there's those functions. Now um, here I had other functions that I created. So I had my focus. So I want to copy those and I'm going to put them in my JavaScript code. Okay, so remember I need to pass in the ID so that I can use it. It's basically like a, a temporary name that I'm giving it uh, and then I can deal with what I want to do with it. So when I call the function, I need to give it that ID. Okay, now the events that I was saying, if I was looking at the events that I have on here, I have on mouse over and on mouse out. So let me copy those and I'm going to go back to my Dreamweaver and I'm going to look at my code. So all I have is this script. It's nice and clean. Uh, and then I am going to look for right here. This is where I want to apply when I'm on this. I want to apply a larger size. So let me make sure I Close it off with a quote. There we go. Okay. That looks good. And so here's my JavaScript code. I'm saying this paragraph, I want you to increase size. This paragraph, I want you to decrease size when I'm focusing on or off. Okay. So let's go ahead and save it, see if it worked. Oops. I should do save all. There we go. Let's double check. Probably going to have to run this live. And that's sweet. File. Okay. All right, so it's getting bigger. That's really huge. So my initial starting width is really, really big. I should probably resize that. Okay, so let's look at what the original one was. My original size for paragraphs. That's probably default. So we're in. Section two. Section two paragraphs. Let's look at our sizing. I don't have a size, so it's just doing a default size. So let's change our font size then default instead of doing medium. Let's do it with vertical width. So uh, one vertical width would be 1% of the width. So let's go into my style CSS. And I'm going to go to that paragraph. I want to do my font size. Font size. And I'm going to change it to, let's, let's try 1VW. That's a little small, 2VW, 1.5VW. Okay, that looks pretty close. I, yeah, 1.5 is my start. So my function code, then I want it to automatically go to 1.5. That's what I want it to default to. So I don't need, in this case, because it's never focused unless I have the mouse over it, I don't need to have the font size on it. So I can comment this out. Or delete it entirely. Okay. Now, what size would I want it? Well, let's play around. Let's see what would be two vertical widths. Is that too big? I think that looks okay. 
So I could go from 1.5 to 2. So let's delete that again. My JavaScript code, my focus off, then, or my focus on would be two vertical widths. Let's go ahead and save this. File, save all. What is my error? It's defined but never used. Missing the use strict statement. The issue when you're using snippets is that you end up getting some crash um, trash code if you're always using that. There are usually shortcuts that they're taking. So you just want to be careful. So I'll have to go through that, but let's see if we have it operating how we want. So let's go back to our page. Fresh, and you're awesome. Ooh, I gotta actually be on my HTML. That's smart. Okay, so I got my code again. That's what it looks like when I'm focusing on it. It's not doing much other than giving just a little bit of functionality, helping to focus things. I'm going in just by hovering. I'm changing some of the design, okay? So to summarize, JavaScript is a way that we can get increased functionality, makes our web, make our website more dynamic, okay? Um, I showed you guys how to do it as an external to help keep your code cleaner. This is what you want. You want to use the attributes. We don't really need this, okay? But we do have to have the source that is pointing to the name of the file. The file should be inside of your uh, site. So you should be able to see it here uh, when you create it. And then if you're using your uh, JavaScript only for that page, you need to have it inside of script tags. Now, what I did not mention um, that's useful to know, if you are doing a lot of functionality and it's not just functions that you're pulling up, but you need to actually um, reference certain things in your page, then it may make more sense instead of having the script tags in your head um, that you want to put it in the body and you want to put it at the end of all your HTML. So before you close the body, you can put your JavaScript down here. The reason why you would do it is if you need to access those specific items to make those changes, um, you need them to load first. The other reason is that if you have extensive JavaScript code, you're going to want that to load after your page loads. So if you have a lot of JavaScript that your page is doing, it's doing a lot of cool movements and stuff. So something like this, you have a lot of this going on. Um, you could create video games with JavaScript. You would want that actually running after the HTML page loads, okay? So that would be at the very end of your body. Before you close your, your body, you would want to put your JavaScript script codes in. Okay, um, if you're just referencing some functions and you're just passing information that's not going automatic, then it's fine to put it in the head and it's probably more um, preferable because it looks much cleaner. In your separate JavaScript um, pages, you are calling the function, giving it a name and then passing in any required parameters, okay? So that, for the most part, is really just the IDs that you're passing in. And then you can um, talk to them specifically 
and change their styles, um, change their position, change their color, uh, change even the text, okay? And have it look different based off the functionality that you need. Um, just like with uh, animations though, JavaScript, it, it's really easy to start going down a crazy route. You need to make sure that your JavaScript is serving some type of purpose. Don't throw it in there to have a whole bunch of stuff moving on your page where it is drawing the viewer away from your focus that you want them to look at. So you don't want big flashy lights and things like that. But adding functionality uh, is something that you could do that would make it look good. So like if I was looking at my website and saying, well, you know, what else could I do? Um, I could have maybe based off my mouse position, maybe I have uh, instead of the normal pointer, maybe I have a specific pointer. I can do that with HTML and, and CSS. I can have a specific pointer um, done, but maybe I want an animation of Redbeard running around based off the position. So if he's on this side of the page, the mouse is, maybe I want Redbeard to be right next to my pointer but facing to the left, or maybe I want him when I'm on the right, facing the right. If I'm, you know, uh, half of a vertical um, height up, uh, 50, you know, vertical height so, um, of my page, maybe I want Redbeard, uh, the animation to be playing, you know, pointing up and then the opposite pointing down. So it's just some ideas. Like what I said, you can use snippets. There are snippets in here. So if you went to, uh, snippets in here you could look and you could see what else that is a little bit more plug-and-play um, instead of designing something more custom there is a lot of different options that you can do okay here is JavaScript code depending on what I need to do um, that's not really I mean that's too easy Data display, determine viewport, screen resolution, mouse position. Okay, that can maybe be useful. Dialogues, doing alert boxes, images, random images, a simple preload, a slideshow, switch images, um, randomizer, starter functions. Okay, all of these could get you well on your way to doing what you want to do in your code. Um, you could even adjust how you want stuff to wrap. There are a lot of different examples. Um, if you go here and you just start scrolling down um, on JavaScript and you can click on the examples and look at the different stuff that you could do with um, your JavaScript and see like, hey, what do I really wanna do um, with my design to help improve it to, in, uh, to make it more functional for the viewer, okay? All right, have fun, good luck.